Welcome to Pause to Pray. For this week I'd like to look at Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving which over the centuries has engaged the attention of all those who love the Lord. A psalm which in its five verses stirs emotions, challenges our loyalty, and for many stimulated them to service. Before we read the psalm, let's just take a moment to pause and pray. Psalm 100 is noted as a psalm for giving grateful praise. Let's read it. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. The first thing to note is just how prominent the Lord is throughout this psalm. There can be no doubt who the central character is. Fifteen times he's mentioned, either by name or personal or possessive pronouns. Note, for example, the possessive his. Eight times it's repeated. Mention is made of his, the Lord's presence, in verse 2, his people, in verse 3, his pasture, verse 3, his gates, his courts, his name, all in verse 4, his mercy and his truth, in verse 5. Each of these could provide a good starting point for reflection and would take us ranging through the scriptures, reminding us of the love, grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus. If we look back to the previous psalm, we'll see that it deals with the Lord's sovereignty, greatness, strength, righteousness, holiness and exaltation and emphasises just how worthy of praise and worship the Lord is. Now at the start of Psalm 100, the first thing I see is the psalmist's desire for universal acclamation of the Lord. He longs that the glory of this high and holy one should be acclaimed throughout all the lands. Just as it was at the dawn of creation, when in all its perfection, as we read in Job 38.7, the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Surely this should be our desire as well. And if it is, should it not prompt us to action? For all of us, should there not be a desire that through our everyday lives we reflect something, however dimly, of our Lord's love, grace and everlasting mercy? As we briefly reflect on the psalmist's desire that the Lord will be acclaimed in all the lands, pray that through Hillview he will be known in our local community. So let's take a little look at the psalm in some detail. Looking at the first two verses, Psalm 100 verses 1 and 2. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Within these first two verses we find a threefold command. First we're commanded to make a joyful noise, or rather a joyful shout. But might we not ask, what reasons can there be for making such a shout? As we look out at our broken, troubled world, perhaps feeling powerless to control even our own path through life, what is there to shout about? The psalmist gives us some answers as he reminds us to look away from ourselves and to focus on the Lord. The psalmist speaks of making a joyful shout because God is his strength, Psalm 81 verse 1. 
and because God is the rock of salvation, Psalm 95 verse 1. And because God is a great God and a great King, Psalm 95 verse 3. It's not always easy to turn our eyes away from ourselves and to focus on the Lord, but when we do, we start to see why we can shout for joy. If we plant our feet firmly on our rock of salvation and live day by day in the strength of God, we will have ample reasons to shout for joy. And then the second command in the verses implores us to serve the Lord. The word serve has a much deeper meaning than first appears on the surface. According to the dictionary Old Testament word studies, it contains four meanings. To labour, to serve another, to serve in a religious sense, and to be subject to a conqueror. If we take those four meanings together, do they not reveal the nature of Christian service? It's labouring together with the Lord. Its motive through love to serve one another, its character to serve the living God. And its incentive arises from being servants of Christ, the one who is the victorious Lord. We revel in all the blessings and privileges that are ours through being the children of God, but we must not forget, we have also become Christ's bondservants. There is work for us all to do. But I wonder in what attitude do we perform that work? Serve, says the psalmist, with gladness. Do we serve reluctantly, grudgingly, out of a spirit of mere duty, or with gladness, out of a deep devotion and love for our Lord Jesus? And then thirdly, we're commanded to come into his presence with singing. For me, this is related to the first part of verse 1, where we're commanded to shout for joy. But perhaps it tells us how we are to come before the Lord. This command would seem to speak to us of reverence, homage, adoration and worship. It also makes it clear that we're expected to come before our Saviour, to come into his presence. Yet, I'll admit to my shame, I do not always feel like shouting for joy, nor am I always glad to serve, nor am I always prone to worship, and often I find excuses not to come into his presence. So how then can I obey these commands? We'll return to that aspect of the psalm next time. But for now, as we come to a close for today, let's stop and pause to reflect on how we so often look in on ourselves rather than out at our majestic, victorious Lord. And in doing that, let's remind ourselves that because of who he is, God is due all honour, all praise, all worship. As we come to a close, I have a final prayer. Lord, we offer to you our joyful praise and thanks for who you are. Help us to serve you with gladness. We come before you with singing and worship. We know and acknowledge you as Lord. You are God. It is you who made us, not we ourselves. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. We enter your presence with thanksgiving and praise. We bring to you our thankful hearts and bless your name. You are good. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to all generations. Amen.